Why do farmers love tires? Shoot. <laughs> yeah, you got plenty of cows. Why don't you make your own urea? Excited because she's going to show us how she runs her farm. So we'll keep you posted. Cool. That is amazing. It's good, isn't it? Mmm. It's okay. so good, Michelle. No, it's so you good. More. Really? Yep, absolutely. So Can I swallow the whole thing? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my god, it tastes so good. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you want to try it, Taylor? That's recording who they are, so that's their number. This is litres, how many they're doing per day. And this is how much grain they're getting per milking. That's their fat percentage in the milk and their protein percentage. So the, the, the way we get this is we do a, what's called a herd test, where we put samples on all the cows mm -hmm. once a month. This information was done three weeks ago. It actually gives you an indication well, yeah. of what so like that cow there in bar 27, yeah. see the number up the top? She's doing 45 litres per day. Whoa. So that's a lot of milk. Big yeah. mama. Yeah. yeah. That is. So we start morning shift, AM shifts 4 o'clock till about 10 o'clock, and then 2 o'clock till about 7 o'clock. And where we go. So this girl milks, just so she milked this morning. She goes home through the day, then comes back in the afternoon and milks again. So then I pick up Ethan or me or whoever does the daytime work. So I'd go to David the road, check dry stock, shift fences, make sure water's right. And I do all those jobs where they do this job. And I guess it's a seven day a week job. Yeah. yeah. 365 days a year. Yeah. Because we're managers, wow. we're on call. Yeah. So if something breaks mm -hmm. down, we've got to be here. Like, yeah. Most, this year, hopefully, we will. But if something goes wrong, we'll be here. We yeah. came yeah. in that way. Get this information here. Farms. So is that is that the building? The whole the whole place yeah. right right now? Uh, yeah, right there. It, it's not the whole building, but that pink that's, thing that's is there. Pink dog. <laughs> yeah. Pink dog. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. But all of this is yeah. feeding ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it's all insane. Gross. So how many of these paddocks are actually being used now for feeding? So every day the cows go into a fresh paddock. So the milk comes from through the machine, underneath into a, into a big. Like literally. It's so warm. It's so weird. You want a massage? Look good like this. <laughs> like super fresh, straight from the cow. Cheers. That's amazing. Let's make some cheese. This side, the cows normally do more. Somehow, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what Carl is doing here is that should be pre spray, which will be um, putting a disinfectant over the teats. So you've got four minutes to get the teat spray on to be able to stop any infection from going in. Are they being led there? No. 
They're walking by themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit. Mr. Isaac's taking us for a drive around the farm, showing us where the cows oh, eat, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And where they okay. usually walk around. Show you the topography of the place. When we start carving the cows, this is called the carving shed. So all that'll have um, have a bed in there of sawdust, and they'll stay in there and we put feed on this concrete lip at the front. We, we walk them into the dairy every day from there. Oh, so this is where they came from before getting milk today. Yeah. People would have to look after the land, so um, we don't want to rake and pillage it. Yeah, exactly. We need to look after for the next generation of people. This bit of footage that you're about to uh, take of is could become world famous. It's going to be the Glenmore motorcycle track. The event this year, um, a 12 kilometer motorbike track. And some of the top riders from Red Bull Australia were going to come. Uh, because of COVID, they couldn't. So next year, yeah, this will be this paddock with four caravans, motorbikes. So when you came up, you were saying, oh, we live close to their farmland? Yeah, yeah, when I was pointing across, you know, Michelle was at our house last week. You could week. have pointed anywhere and you would have hit the farmland. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So from the boundary to the boundary, we've got 17 kilometres of river. So you deal with So all this is river. Yeah. It's not a, I shouldn't say river, it's creek. Creek country. June, July or August. And this whole flat goes underwater. So all of this. So everything that's cut, we've just cut hay. So that freshly cut grass yeah. is going to be hay. All of that, what you can see, goes underwater. Because we've just come out of the spring flush, we could have had 3,000 head of cattle on this farm and still wouldn't have had enough cattle to eat all the grass. We got, we'll cut hay, cut silage, and then we've just got some more cows coming home now. So how much does it cost when you have to do that, like generate your own electricity so for that, a couple of days? So now it's just diesel, so we've got, we've, what we've done is put a tractor pack in, so which means it runs off the back of the tractor, and um, so it's only costing us about um, maybe five litres of diesel per hour, which is, yeah. 20 bucks, say at the most, 20 bucks now. Yeah, that's so, not so too it's bad. Quite good, quite good. Yeah, that's not too bad. So have you had, had like a real disaster? So back in 2010, the terrain power station uh, catch on fire. Oh. And um, <clears throat> the power was down here, the southwest for about a week. Oh. So yeah, we generated power and um, it was quite horrific actually. Not. Not as bad as some of the, like, probably the locals, or, well, not so much local, but the of recent times where the bushfires went through Gippsland. I reckon they were two weeks, mm. weren't they? Two weeks, yeah. they're power, yeah. poor buggers. It's still, like, you got to go out of your way just to maintain Yeah, itself. so yesterday morning at 9 o'clock it went out, so we had to make sure that we were prepped the night before, ready for it, and then made sure all the staff turned up on time, you know, made sure we got the milk milking done efficiently. So we were finished by about 8 o'clock, 8.30 yesterday morning, and then we switched to generator power. So then that ran the, the milk chiller, the, the water pumps, and then we started milking in the afternoon under generator power. And then at 3 o'clock when it came back on in between the two herds, we then changed back to the, the, the power from, from, yeah, yeah, exactly. from the lawn. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing though how much we rely on power. And, oh, it's, yeah, crazy. <clears throat> and, oh, yeah. and the amount of times I ducked in home and I went to get a drink of water, wash my hands. It was just, you just forget. So how many acres do you have at this time yeah. right now? 1,600. Yeah, so the kids use 1,600. So is that all grass underneath those tires? Yes. Whoa. About um, four and a half thousand ton of wet. So if you weighed the silage as it was coming in, it's about four and a half thousand ton. So it's just got to, um, go through the ensiling process. So that takes about four weeks. Yeah. And then it's sort of cooked, so to speak, and ready to ready to eat. Yeah. Um, as it's coming in, there's two tractors that are rolling it, pushing it, rolling it, pushing, rolling the whole time. So the compaction is is is, is quite so you could that you, you can't you won't can't poke your finger into it, that's how tight it is. And this green one the reason why there's not as many tyres on it is that it's a change of concept. So the industry, and, and probably coming from Europe, you guys would probably have a better understanding of it than me, but obviously in Europe, you know, anything, a tyre, you've got to you've got to have a reason behind disposing of it or why you've used it, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. So these are, are going away from tyres, so they're quite a thick tarp, 
um, and eventually we'll um, we will take the tyres away and we'll use like a water sack so and, and just fill it up with the fire truck and then you just when you want to um, pull it back to feed you just release it let the water out fold it up put it in the shed and then you can use it again the next year so eventually we'll go away from plastic and tyres which will be much better for everybody awesome. urea which is nitrogen so there's a urea silo yep so we spread the urea out on the paddock for, to promote grass growth so you react as a fertilizer in other words. Yep. yep. You got plenty of cows, why don't you make your own urea? So, well that's, that, no, technically you're right, that's right. So yeah. we've got to get better at how we manage effluent and, um, we, and we know we do and as Australians we're probably backward in that fact. Um, you know, as opposed to Europe, Europe is, a, is a, as an industry leader as far as I'm concerned as, as how they've got to deal with all of their waste and their, and their management of it. Um, and they're quite successful at doing it well. So I think we, as, as Aussies, we've got a lot to learn from other parts of the world. You know. They'll get there. You've yeah. got the improvement here already. It's way less tires on this than on the other pile. Yeah. You know how many times I've driven past farms and seen these piles of tires, and I'm like, why do farmers love tires? <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to say, fuck their ass with cars. This is what I'm saying. It's like they've blown up a lot of tires. <laughs> Farmers fucking hate tyres. <laughs> <laughs> the crop um, that's in here, that you won't, obviously you won't see it. So you can just see the rows of it. Uh, it's not corn. You might think it looks like corn, it's not corn. It's actually um, sugar beet. Wow. Sugar beet? Fodder beet, yeah. So oh, right. obviously, um, so Europe, Europe they make, um, obviously sugar production comes from sugar beet. Um, in Australia, it's mainly sugar cane, obviously. Um, yeah, Bundaberg. <laughs> yeah, rum. <laughs> um, this is a word association game, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it, just, it just got there quick, didn't it? <laughs> Went from here to here. That takes about three and a half to four months to grow. Probably more like four months, so 16 weeks. And, um, yeah. I should have asked, what do you use it for? It's a cow feed, so the cows really do well on it. So it's, a, it's about a 16 megajoule crop, so energy, so high in energy. Pardon me, which complements high protein silage and grain. So it's a really good diet for the cows. So at least they get some mixed feed. You, yeah, they yeah, get yeah. grass, they get the feed they get when they get milk. Yeah, the grain in the dairy, then they'll get rape or canola. Yeah. And, and uh, when that's ready, they'll get beets as well. Very, yeah, very well looked How after animals. How much does a cow eat a day? About 24 kilos of dry matter. His eyes have to be calculating the space for how many cows yeah. he's got. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, the space required, how much feed there is, and yeah. measure the feed. So it's like, you know, you, I look at that paddock there and I already know roughly how many kilos per hectare there is on there mm. available. Yeah. So cows will drink about 150 litres a day per cow. So you think a thousand cows times 150 litres is a lot of water. So milk is made up of 92% water. So if cows don't get water, we're in, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. <laughs> to know how the country is doing is the fact that we've been seeing quail. If you start seeing quail around, co coveys of quail, you know you're doing some things right. Yep. They're very particular and We've seen some different environments, you know, boundary environments, and yet the quail are here. They're an interesting animal, aren't they? And yeah. John and I, one year, uh, had a lot of quail, and it was very hard to replicate that same year yes. again for actually the last eight or nine years. We've wondered, was it the species of grass and what, you know? Yeah. But you're dead right, they're such a fickle animal. Yeah. When you're there, there, you know you've got it right. Yeah. And then we're back. Thank you so thank much. You so much. Thank you. Yeah, thousand awesome. things. Well, Isaac, thank you so much for the tour. Good to meet you. That was amazing. Great to have you on the farm. Thank you, thank you. Hope you learn a bit. And thank you too, Michelle. Oh, no worries. It's been amazing. Hey. Thank you today. Thanks. Take Bye. care, Michelle. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. That was amazing. Yeah, that was yeah, awesome. It was like the best day ever, honestly. I loved it. We ended back home for a Swedish fika with some Danish flutterballer and some Australian mean slices. Cheers! Cheers everyone! Cheers! Cheers. 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 like, what? Wait! What about me? Right.
Shit Hunter Shit. 